Hi, my name is Roy Toazon, and I am the Associate Art Director for the Dead Space Remake. Today, I want to talk to you about the environment art process, how we are remaking the game with our new tools, techniques, and pipelines, and finally do a demo in the Frostbite engine on how we took a room from the legacy version to our current work in progress. Today, we are going to look at the MRI room in Chapter 2. When Dead Space was released more than 14 years ago, the visuals were great. It set the bar high for its time. But since then, technology has evolved, and with that, it allowed us to remake the game and really accentuate the main pillars of horror, immersion, and a lived-in world. Let me quickly go over our process with you. On the environment side, we break down our pipeline into six phases that go from L0 to L5. L0 is our R&D phase where we analyze the original game and identify what we can remake this area, either through gameplay, visuals, sound, etc. Based off any changes, we would do some exploration concepts to improve on the art pillars. L1. This phase is when the area will be playable, with rough blockout of the visual intentions. When re recreating a room in Frostbite, the artist will break it down into kits, pieces that they can use to build the room. Think of this as Lego blocks. They will be simple shapes, sizes, that represent the theme of the room. L2 is where details and colors are added into the kits to support the thematic of the area. Large props are staged, and the initial mood will be set. L3 is where we start to update the different PBR materials to a more realistic look, add more props to support the theme, and refine the lighting and VFX. You should start to get that immersive feeling by having the area more relatable and believable. L4 is where we add all the narrative elements. All the architectural kits get a polish pass with a wear and tear, small props, Signs, markings, bloodstains, dirt, and grime are added to get that lived-in world feeling and give that horror storytelling element. L5 is where the polished elements of all the art department gets integrated to give that final high-quality next-gen Dead Space look and feel. This will be coming soon. Just to get a proper understanding of where we are in the production for this area, we are here in the beginning stages of our L4 phase. Now that you know how we work, we want to next demonstrate how we will remake these assets. Here is an example of a legacy asset, and here are some of the elements we plan on adding to get that immersive feeling throughout the ship. We want to show functionality. Rivets in the metal to show how it was put together. Latches on the window frames to show how the workers can remove it if it ever needed to be repaired. The variation in our PBR materials the way light reacts to different types of painted metal versus the raw metal underneath. More realistic light fixtures. The dirty glass cover protects the light sources, giving that depth and more realistic feel. Add more shape and depth to the model to give it that believable look. To get that old live-in ship look, we added wear and tear to the paint metal and dirt accumulation in areas that would not normally get cleaned. Now that we've highlighted a few examples of how we are going to remake an asset, in our next section, we want to put you in the seat of an artist and show you how our tools, techniques, and pipeline works. Hi there, I'm Evan Yovanovich, Senior Environment Artist on the Dead Space Remake, and I'm going to give you a closer look at how we make assets for the Ishimura. Here's an example wall asset as it passes through all the various stages of production. L1, raw model made to specific metrics for maximum reuse. L2, Further refined modeling and color pass added. L3, more modeling details are added, custom masks are baked to control grime and wear using in-engine tools. L4, fine trim and embedded details are added as well as beveled edges. Next, we'll have a look in Maya to see how the color pass is achieved. Here in Maya, we'll be using the palette UV tool created by our tech team to help change the colors of our wall mesh. On the right-hand side, we can see the UV coordinates of the model, which correspond to the mesh's faces. As I click the different swatches in the UV palette tool, the UV shells are moved to different quadrants, resulting in a color change. By using this palette system, we are able to keep colors consistent to art direction and swap in different palette textures for each district theme, such as clean, industrial, and public, depending on the assets used within the ship. Now, let's dig into how some of our mesh details are achieved. Here in Blender, I'm going to show you one of our trim sheet texture sets I made by rebuilding and remixing details from the original Dead Space into a new texture layout. 
As we can see, this texture set uses parallax occlusion mapping, which allows you to mimic depth and details on an otherwise very simple geometry. One technique we have explored for applying these texture sets on models is using the third-party add-on decal machine to define specific parts of the texture set to a library, which can then be easily swapped and adjusted on the model. As you can see, this technique makes it fun to try out different trim combinations and can produce some interesting results. Here we will apply the same library to the wall example we saw before. Through use of these trim textures, we are able to quickly try different approaches and create consistent details. We try our best to focus on how these models would actually be constructed, creating panel lines where pieces meet and connect, as well as adding handles and access points where parts could be removed for maintenance and cleaning. Hi, I'm Xavier Perrault, and I am the lead environment artist on the Dead Space Remake. I will be talking more in the details about our approach to level art and how we set the tone of the different areas of the ship and tell the story of the Ishimura through our environments. We have now the architectural modules modeled and their mask baked using our engine tool. The masks will define how the wear and grime build up on each of the modules. You can tell how the edges are scratched and how rust sits in the creases. The architectural shader reads those masks and by tuning the parameters of the master shader, we can control the amount of wear and grime in a whole section of the ship at once. The shader defines the ground state of the architecture visuals, but at this point it all looks the same everywhere. The well masking volumes come in play. They are fully scalable and can be used in many ways for multiple layering effects. We can increase the amount of wear or rust built up on the assets, or even add new layers on top, like water or dust, for instance. Of course, these techniques are better applied once the assets are put in context, in the level. Tuning the master shader and adding volumes of world masking are an integral part of defining the storytelling of the ship and how it has aged over time. With a growing library of architectural modules, they can be assembled to fully build all the sections of the Ishimura as one big interconnected ship in line with our metric guidelines. Then comes the main lighting intentions and the props dressing. We always ask ourselves what the function of that room is, how do we make it believable, and tell the story of the people that live there and how the events took place. Projected decals of labeling and gore are the icing on the cake. Going a step further, we can add a few world masking volumes to wear down the floor in a realistic way where people used to stand and walk around in this setup. Maybe a water canister fell over near that desk and leaked all over the floor. But that was a while ago, and rust built up all around it. After seeing our pipeline, tools, and in-engine demo, using the small room besides the MRI machine, you can see in this before and after comparison, we remade this room to accentuate the art pillars even more. We want the player to believe that the Ishimura crew worked here, that the functionality of this room makes sense, and you can even imagine yourself working in this environment. If I take this part of the room, for example, before, there used to be some shelves, lockers, and props around the wall with some writing on the ground. We remade it to have more immersive and believable theme. We made this corner of the room more functional by adding an examination bed with medical equipment. We gave that lived-in world by aging the walls and floors with some wear and tear, added dirt and grime. This is the oldest functioning mining ship. We wanted to make sure that came through in the environment. Finally, we injected the horror pillar into this room with a bloody narrative scene on the bed and floor. We want to insinuate that something horrible happened here and give that sense of danger looming around every corner. Thank you for joining us on this behind the scene look at the environment art process. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Herdrutter and I'm the lead VFX artist on the Dead Space remake. What I'm going to show you today is some of the atmospheric and environmental VFX that have been created by our team. These are VFX such as fog, smoke, and pyrotechnics that help populate the Ishimura and help tell the Dead Space narrative. Now before I show you what we're doing, 
Let's take a look at the original Dead Space and what they did for their environmental VFX. They did an amazing job in setting a very desaturated color palette with everything very muted and everything feels very natural. Nothing feels fantastical or takes you out of that horror mood. For the remake, we wanted to stay true to this, but look for opportunities to push things further using modern day techniques. The original was quite limited in terms of complexity of VFX, while we have a lot more room to move. The first thing I'd like to show you is how some of our VFX can react to changing environmental conditions. So here we have a debug scene, and as you can see, it's pretty much empty with some sparks and drips. These are pretty typical VFX that we'll see in a number of locations in the Ishimura to show damaged areas. What I'd like to show you is how these effects can react to changing environmental conditions, and in this case, what happens when gravity is disabled. I'm going to disable the gravity here, and right now we can see that these VFX are behaving differently, and they're no longer falling to the floor. Now there's a lot more happening than just the gravity. I can make a number of artistic choices as to how the VFX behave. For example, with the drips, I wanted to extend their lifetime so they spread out across the room rather than disappear quickly. For the sparks, I reduced their turbulent motion because when they had a lot of turbulence, it felt like they were still in normal conditions. There's a number of things that we can modify so that when the player interacts with these effects, they'll feel believable and well integrated. These little details can really add up to help tell the story and make the Ishimura feel like it's alive. Next, I'd like to show you a little bit about our pyrotechnics pipeline. I'm looking at one of our explosion effects. This is something we'd see when a small prop is getting destroyed. Here we have a bunch of different elements, like a fireball, smoke, sparks, and debris. I'll hide a few of these so we can concentrate just on the fire and smoke. I'll set this to loop so we can see it continually playing. Something that is important to Dead Space is that we have a lot of dark environments that have changing lighting conditions. We were finding that elements such as fire and explosions would look way too bright when the environment was dark, and then would be barely visible when the environment was brighter. So what we had to do was to be sure that our source pyrotextures were rendered in full HDR quality to ensure that the final image would contain the full range of brightness values. I'll slow this down a bit so we can see things a bit more clearly. If I zoom in, the exposure will adjust so it doesn't appear too blown out, and when I back off, it will readjust. If I change this to a darker environment, you'll see that we don't get a crazy amount of overbrightness and we're still able to see a lot of detail in the texture. And finally, I'll go to pitch black. It still holds up and behaves naturally. So this all means that we can play a lot with the lighting in our environments, and the VFX will still integrate into the experience well and be legible by the player. The final thing I wanted to show is our interactive atmospherics. So here I am in another test map. I have a few debug lights floating around so we can see what's happening here. I'll just back up and start one of our steam effects. So what do we have here? It's a volume-based 3D simulation. It exists inside a container, and density and velocity values are pushed around to create what we see here. Something that's cool about this simulation is that it lives in the physics world, so if the player walks through it, it will interact. Also, if I pick up an object, like this battery, it will also behave quite naturally. This will work if I spawn an enemy. I disabled its AI so it won't attack me. As you can see, the steam will collide and interact with him too. This effect also works quite well with our lighting and renders with the rest of the fog we have throughout our game. This can be used in a number of cases. We can create a steam or smoke effect like this, or we can cover the floor with a thin layer of interactive fog. In some cases, we can even fill an entire room with a cool simulation like this to give us some interesting and terrifying gameplay situations. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the VFX we're working on. Hello everyone, I'm Sam Kompengla and I'm the lead character artist on the Dead Space remake. I'm here today to give you a sneak peek on how we created the Isaac Intermediate Engineer suit, the slasher, and talk about our artistic process and our tools. Before I get started, I'd like to warn you that I will be showing some graphic content. There will be blood and guts. Well, everything that makes Dead Space so lovely. Let's start with Isaac Intermediate Engineer suit. 
During the early phase of our project, we took inspiration from the legacy model and we followed the rules that made Isaac's suit so iconic. Looking at the ribbing that is inspired by Gothic architecture and human anatomy, the three lines on his helmet, and the overall layered look that reminds us this is a worker's outfit and not a military uniform. This was the thinking we used as we redesigned the suit for our remake. We were tempted to go in a science fiction direction, but kept the suit design low-tech, dusty, dirty and greasy. We kept in mind that the suit was produced by a greedy corporation like CEC and was built in an utilitarian way, with a low production cost. And so, here we are with the new design, making it functional. And as you can see, we made sure the suit was airtight at the seams to make it feel believable for use in outer space. Here we are in ZBrush, where the character model is sculpted as if it was formed by digital clay. This is where we do most of our sculpting and where we spend most of our time creating the character. The head is worked in a separate file and in a different way as it is based on a gunner's rights head scan and come with all his facial expressions. The helmet is worked on separately as well because of the size of the file as it tends to slow us down. As you can see here, we worked on the outside and inside of the helmet, so it matches when Isaac removes it. Since you already saw Isaac in game on the previous live stream, I will use this time to take you on a tour of Simpsons Painter, which is a texturing software. There are plenty of layers to get to the final result. It goes from the base of the fabric to the dirt and many metal variations. This is here as well that we add micro detail like fabrics and grain. The design of the suit was purposely kept low cost. We also avoided rare material like leather due to its rarity on Earth in the Dead Space universe. We used instead synthetic material and dull metal that oxidized quickly. We took as reference real world miner from the surveys, and like them, Dead Space Universe miner are given cheap outfits because company didn't equip them well and didn't care about their safety. Now that we've seen Isaac's suit, I'd like to show you a slasher since there is always one waiting around the corner. Or busting out of a vent. We researched the legacy concept and model, taking note what made the slasher a memorable enemy with its claw-shaped arm and deformed body. Not only the design itself was important to our new slasher, but it was equally important to make it satisfying to dismember and peel away its layers. Here are some visual development on how we wanted to dismember the slasher from its intact state to the fully destroyed one, with all the phases in between. Some peeling, dismemberment with hanging parts, and finally the fully dismembered version. So, we started to think about the inside. This is the part that will be revealed when you shoot at the necromorph. Naturally, we wanted to expose its internal organs since this was the base of our recipe. Then, show it bones, muscles, and fat. We didn't want it to see all the muscles, as it's only supposed to reveal a wounded part made by Isaac's tools. The next question we asked ourselves was, how could we build a system that fit most of the necromorph? Well, the solution was to cut it in pieces. As you can see, all the parts are separated. This way, we could use them as we wanted, like for the brute, which is made of three humans, we can easily kit batch its skeleton this way. All internal organs are also separated. This way, we could use them as we wish. Now that we covered the inside of the slasher, let's see where we are with the outside. We sculpted it in ZBrush, thinking about how the skin stretched and tore as the limb grew up very quickly during a very painful transformation. The layering is important here, as well as what the open wound will reveal. We have the skin, fat, muscle, cartilage, bones, and we need to see and understand each part. Now, I will jump straight into Painter. Just like for Isaac and all our models, we sculpted them in ZBrush, but here, the texturing and materials are more interesting. First, while we are currently only showing a single skin tone, since the Ishimura is screwed by humans from all corners of the galaxy, 
it makes sense that our slasher reflect a wide range of ethnicities in the final game. You will notice that we reduce the amount of blood and dirt present before you start shooting at it to enhance the visual feedback of the peeling process. Finally, let me show you how we texture this little fellow, adding layers and layers of details to make it more realistic. We start with a plain color as base, and then we add some layers that will have an influence on the reflection, color, and micro volumes. We took care to think about how the wounded skin would look like, bloody, but yellowish when it's dried of blood. Then we added some more subtle details like veins, moles, and pimples. And to finish, let's add, well, you've already guessed what? Blood. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Isaac suit and the slasher work in progress. Hello, my name is Mike Yeomans, and I'm a lighting lead here at Motive. Today my teammates and I are going to talk a bit about the lighting on Dead Space Remake. First of all, we're going to talk about how we are recreating the fantastic lighting design of Dead Space 1, we'll follow up with our lighting process and advances in real-time lighting, and lastly, we'll show you how we create an immersive sense of atmosphere, which is an important visual pillar for us. Dead Space had iconic design down to the last detail, and the lighting fixtures weren't left out of this equation. They just felt unique and that they fit into the design of the ship perfectly. We have reimagined the lighting design of the Ishimura and Valor, staying true to the originals while creating additional fixtures that fit into this established direction. The fixture design feels modern while the bulb technology feels grounded in the present day. We are creating the illusion of depth in our fixtures so you can see the inner workings of the bulb beyond the glass using emissive shaders with a parallax effect. The brightness of the fixture respects the intensities of their real-world counterparts and our lighting system uses the surface area of our emissive surfaces to determine how bright the bulbs get. Our volumetric lighting creates realistic cones of light that are unique to each fixture design, so we get really interesting shards of light with a hint of color. Much like in the real world, we use Kelvin temperature to determine the hue of our lights, so once again they feel familiar to what you would expect in real life. Area lights were previously reserved mostly for cinematics due to their increased performance cost. We are using them more extensively in Dead Space Remake as they help to create convincing specular shapes, diffused lighting and shadows, and a more accurate volumetric shape. Simply put, they have lighting qualities that standard spotlights just can't achieve. Area lights make the most sense for rectangular looking light fixtures such as signage. It would have been hard to reproduce the lighting from these types of sources with more punctual lights. Hi, my name is Mathieu Tetro, and I'm a senior lighting artist on Dead Space Remake. Our lighting artists are able to craft the lighting in real time and control exactly how much indirect light or global illumination is bouncing around the scene. In previous game, we had to do offline calculation to pre-compute lighting and apply it to geometry in the form of light maps. This was time consuming for artists and will limit any drastic lighting changes. Our remake is using a new GPU probe system which allow real-time approximation of enteric light. Artists can get direct feedback from the change and can better match the amazing concept art. Our tools allow lighting artists to visualize individual lighting passes and material properties to isolate issues and iterate on quality. As each light is activated and dialed in, we can see the bounce lighting react in real time. This approach was essential to ensure we can accommodate all the drastic lighting changes that occur in real time in front of the player. Scary lighting changes, quarantine, light flickering. We place fixture in the ship much like it would have been assembled in a shipyard. Then, we'd give an area a distinct character by changing the behavior and setting on each fixture instance. This allows each area to have its own signature mood, ambience, and level of horror. We focus on developing credible light behavior, such as flickering, that is specific to different types of light, from fluorescent to incandescence and halogen. Imagine an old fluorescent light tube constantly flickering while trying to turn on. In this video, we can see how the electrical current is driving the behavior of different fixture technology, from fluorescent to incandescent.
Hi, I'm Guillaume Goudreau. I'm a lead outsource lighter on Dead Space Team. In game development, we often use fog to help simulate atmospheric perspective and add ambience to a level. It is used to communicate a sense of depth and detach the different elements of the background. In Dead Space, the atmosphere of the ship is one of the key contributors of the sense of horror. To create that atmosphere, we've gone one step further. We are putting a lot of energy into creating a realistic volumetric fog solution. First, we need a lot of control to create the dreadful atmosphere expected in Dead Space. With our system, we can simulate a layered fog approach. We have control over the texture that move and shift inside of the fog. We can control the speed of the movement and detail in the texture. We can recreate a fog creeping along the floor. We have also control over the absorption. It gives the feeling of a thick, dense smoke that absorbs light. Very much like the smoke that collects on the ceiling during a fire. We can also control the color of the fog for those moments when we need a little extra punch. Second, we need a convincing light interaction with the fog. When we combine our lighting and the fog, we immediately see the impact. We can easily sculpt and tweak the shard of light cutting across the room. It really adds a lot to a scene. We can go from the simplest environment to a gloomy looking scene. Lastly, we need something flexible. Whenever we have a big change and we need to adjust the mood of the scene, we can animate and adjust the environment fog. This is especially useful when we do transition from the inside of the USG Ishimura to the outside. We will be able to contrast the heavy ambience of our interior with the complete lack of atmosphere in the outer space.